Hello everyone. I am Mahadev, Assistant Professor in the Department of ENC at Dayanan Sagar Academy of Technology and Management. In today's topic, we will be covering about Introduction to Electronics Engineering. The topic we are going to see is about Operational Amplifier, Lecture 1. Let us see the content, what we are going to cover. So first topic is Operational Amplifier, Symbol and Connections, Operational Amplifier Parameters, Operational Amplifier Characteristics, Operational Amplifier Configurations, and Operational Amplifier Applications. First, let us understand about Operational Amplifier. So an Operational Amplifier is an analog circuit block that takes a differential voltage input and produces a single-ended output. So as we can see here in the figure, figure we have two differential inputs, one output there. Okay, so an operational amplifier is an integrated circuit that can amplify the weak electric signals. So here, the main application of this amplifier is what? To amplify the weak signal to the larger signal in order to transmit to the far distance. So we use the operational amplifier here. And it is called as operational because it can perform certain mathematical operations such as arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, integrator, differentiator, and voltage follower. Since it performs a mathematical operation, we call this one as operational amplifier. Let us see the symbol and connections of the op-amp or operational amplifier, a short form of operational amplifier as op-amp. The symbol for operational amplifier is as shown in the figure. It has two inputs. One is inverting terminal input, Another one is non-inverting input. Another one is output. One is positive supply. Another one is negative supply. So negative terminal indicates inverting input. And a positive terminal indicates a non-inverting terminal there. It means what? Whatever you are giving input, if you give an input to the negative terminal, the output will be 180 degree phase shift. If you give the input to the positive terminal, there will be no phase shift across the output because it is positive and it remains in the same phase. And generally, the operational amplifier works with the power supply in the range of plus or minus 6 volts to plus or minus 15 volts. Okay, now and this is the IC, and the frequently used IC of the op amp is mu A741 IC, and it is an 8 pin configuration as shown in this particular figure there. And this particular notch present here will help us to identify the pin numbers there or a dot present on the I see here. So if you see the notch, the left hand side, if you observe here, it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 2 and 3 are connected to the negative and not uh, inverting terminal. 7 and 4 is connected to the positive negative supply, and 6 is connected to the output supply. And these are the symbol and connections of the operational amplifier. So now let us see some of the important concepts. What is required here? So since we are applying a power supply to the operational amplifier, we call that one as biasing. Biasing is the process of providing a DC voltage, which helps in functioning of the circuits or applying a power supply to the any electronic circuit is called as biasing there. Okay, so biasing means giving a power supply to the any of the electronic circuit to make it working. Next, we have a resistance. As we already know, that is in definition there. It opposes the flow of current in an LA electrical circuits. It is represented by R. We have another terms as reactance. Reactance is defined as opposition of the flow of current from the circuit element due to its inductance and a capacitance. If you see here, the reactance is denoted by X. The total reactance is the summation of inductive resistance, reactance, and a capacitive reactance. X is equal to XL plus XC. Okay, so XL is nothing but due to the inductance, where XL is equal to omega L. When the circuit element contains only XL, then XC will be zero, and X is equal to XL, where omega is equal XL is equal to omega L, omega is equal to 2 pi F. Similarly, if it has only capacitance, then 
x is equal to xc and xc is equal to 1 by omega c, where omega is equal to 2 pi f. Next, let us see about op <clears throat> op amp parameters or operational amplifier parameters. The first parameter what we are going to study here is about open loop voltage gain. Open loop voltage gain means that here the output is not connected to the input. There is no feedback present here. Okay, first point has to be made clear here. And since it's a gain, how to calculate gain is, if you observe the definition here, we have written AV. AV represents the gain there, voltage gain. OL represents open loop gain. So output by input gives the open loop voltage gain there, where VN is nothing but input voltages, where V1 is connected to positive and V2 is connected to negative. So it is VN is equal to V1 minus V2. Okay, and generally the open loop voltage gain is measured in decibels. So we take in terms of log that is AV of open loop is nothing but 20 log 10 to base 10 VL by VN. Okay, so the most amplifier have an open loop voltage gain of 90 dB there. Closed loop voltage gain. So where closed loop voltage gain is also defined as output voltage to the input voltage with a proper feedback connected to the input there. So AV is equal to, we are represented for closed loop as CL, it is V out by V in there. Now let us solve some problem related to the gains, what we have defined it. So an operational amplifier operating with negative feedback produces an output voltage of two volts when supplied with an input of 400 microvolts. Determine the value of the closed loop voltage gain because here it is given feedback. So it is closed loop voltage gain and the output is 2 volts and the input is 400 microvolts. So the closed loop voltage is gain is nothing but V out by V in. So it is 2 volts divided by 400 micro. So it is given as 5000. It is converted to dB. It's nothing but 74 dB. So the closed loop voltage gain for the given parameter is around 74 dB. Similarly, we have another definitions for the open parameters are input resistance. As we know the resistance definition as voltage by input. So it is a ratio, it is a ratio of input voltage to the input current expressed in terms of ohms. So R in is equal to V in by I in since it is input resistance. So usually the input resistance is very, very high in terms of mega ohms. Now let us see some problems on this. So an operational amplifier has an input resistance of two mega ohms. Determine the input current when the input voltage of five milli ohms is present. So now as we know the formula R is R in is equal to V in by I in. So R in is given, V in is given. I, we can easily find I in. So I in is nothing but V in by R in. So V is what five milli ohms divided by resistance two mega ohms which is nothing but 2.5 nano ampere we are going to get. So current input current is 2.5 nano ampere. Similarly, we have output resistance here. The output resistance of an operation amplifier is defined as the ratio of open circuit output voltage to the short circuit output current expressed in ohms. Okay, so its definition is V out by I out. Okay in terms of ohms. So input offset voltage, the voltage that must be applied differentially to the operational amplifier input in order to make the output voltage exactly zero is known as the input offset voltage. So here we have the input offset voltage is given by to make the output voltage zero, we give a minimum voltage across the input. So this particular in minimum input voltage is called as input offset voltage. Next we have slew rate. Slew rate of an operation amplifier is the rate of change of output voltage with respect to time. So the slew rate is equal to delta V out divided by delta T. So this is the definition of the slew rate what we have. So these are some of the parameters of an operational amplifier. Now let us see the ideal operational amplifier characteristics. 
So ideal operation amplifier characteristics mm -hmm. are we can observe the first point. So infinite open loop gain where gain is given by V out by V in. So the open loop gain is always infinite because when the input voltage is zero, the gain becomes infinite there. So input resistance, infinite input impedance are in. And so the zero input current we get. Since the input impedance is zero, and current entering to the op amp is zero there. Zero output impedance are out. And so the infinite output current flows there. As there is a zero resistance across the output, maximum current flows to the output. So infinite bandwidth with zero phase shift. So as we can see, it is amplifying the signal and transferring it to the far distance. So the bandwidth required will be more. So we call this one as infinite bandwidth as the ideal characteristics of an op amp. Next, we have infinite common mode rejection ratio, CMRR. So CMRR should always be infinite for the ideal op amp characteristics. Okay, later we see the definition of that. Generally, the definition of CMRR is differential gain divided by the common mode gain there. Okay, so zero input offset voltage. So this is the input voltage which requires to make the output zero there. So zero input offset voltage what we have. Infinite slew rate is another one characteristics what we have. Infinite output voltage range. As we know, the input is zero. It's very, very small. It can have a maximum output range for what we oh, add the amplifier. Then zero noise. And the last point is about infinite power supply rejection ratio. So these are some of the ideal op amp characteristics what we have. If you have any questions, go to the comment section, write down your questions. I will reply to your questions. If you like my video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon for further notification and share with your friends for the benefits and those who are in need. Thank you.